so uh, as I understand, and I'm sure you are the expert, camping, hiking, and all outdoor activity has an extra risk associated within this season, being aware of Lyme disease, uh, which is uh, associated with tick bites. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And and I think what we want to talk about is prevention tips for Lyme disease from certain tick bites. Uh, for example, uh, and in fact, maybe I interested in my talk, and let me have you talk some about prevention <laughs> approaches to prevent uh, Lyme disease. Sure. Let me just start off with uh, some things about the study that we did. Uh, okay. First is that. Lyme disease is a growing public health epidemic. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimate that more than 300,000 people will be infected this year. It's among the most common notifiable infectious disease. In this Quest Diagnostics Health Trend study, we showed that the epidemic has been growing greatly in the last several years and has spread to a number of states where it's been rare or uncommon. As you mentioned, Dr. Goodman, Importantly, we can take steps to reduce our exposure and take steps if we think we have been exposed. Okay. And, uh, for example, in prevention tips, uh, what sort of prevention tips would you want to suggest? I understand there are certain things that people do outside in camping uh, and other activities during the summer which increase the chance of one getting Lyme disease. Agreed. And it's also just walking on trails, um, walking uh, sometimes in in one's yard or in, in gardening. The prevention steps are mostly common sense. Cover as much skin as possible when outside in wooded or grass, grassy areas. Uh, it's a little goofy, but tuck your pants inside your socks. Uh, Use repellents that contain permethrin or apply DEET. Uh, Always read the instructions. Don't apply near the mouth, eyes, nose, or hands. Don't apply to newborns. Read the instructions. Walk in the middle of trail. Stay away from the grassy areas. And when one comes inside, take a shower, bath, uh, and use a mirror to get that full body look over. And when checking children, check the scalp behind the knees, between their legs, around their ears, and beneath their arms. And inspect clothes. Put clothes in a dryer just to the high heat setting. Tumble dry for an hour to destroy any ticks. These are all common sense steps to take uh, to reduce the likelihood of getting bit by a tick. Did you mention DEET also? I did. That's and, very effective. And is that something you just get it in drugstore or where? Absolutely. Uh, lots and lots of drug stores and other stores uh, sell uh, insect repellent that contains DEET, uh, as well as uh, permethrin, which also can be embedded in some clothes. Okay. Where can one get more information about tick uh, bites and preventing uh, Lyme disease? Um, we have when I say, when I say I- where... I mean, such as in the Internet. Um, There are a large number of sources. Uh, Most reliable tends to be the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC website. Okay. Um, Information about the study is available at www.questlimereport.com. Okay. Give me that again. Uh, The Quest Lime Report is available at www.questlimereport.com. Dot com. Okay. LimeReport.com. Okay, and and that will give more information about the prevention and, and so forth? Yes. Um, if we have time, Dr. Goodman, let me tell you a little bit more about Lyme. Yeah, go uh, right ahead. It's okay. It's an infection caused by the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi. It's a bacteria that's carried by the black-legged tick in the western part of the country. It's the western black-legged tick. The tick needs a blood meal to progress in each stage of its development. And if infected from a previous blood meal, it can infect its next host, whether it's a cat, a dog, a mouse, a deer, or a human. 
The first symptoms tend to be fever, chills, muscle aches, and malaise. These are big and common to many types of infection. Many people don't recall having these uh, symptoms. Um, there's a rash that's a classic rash that's observed in three out of four people infected. It typically appears seven to 10 days later. It's generally red, warm, painless, and not itchy, and expands over several days to three to 12 inches across. And sometimes there's a clearing zone so it looks like a bullseye. In um, minorities with uh, darker skin color, um, it's harder to, to observe. Um, so that's uh, something especially uh, important to minorities is to try to uh, look for that rash that's harder to, to find. Right. Um, if one is bit by a tick, uh, it takes uh, less than 5% of tick bites uh, will lead to Lyme disease. Um, but it's important to think about removing that tick. It takes at least 36 hours of the tick on one's body uh, before the tick transmits the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. There's time to think about it. The original tick is very small. It's the size of a poppy seed. You'd have to look carefully to identify it. And if you do find a tick, um, don't rush to yank it out. Think carefully. Find a fine tip tweezer to grasp the tick as close as one can to the skin surface. Pull upward or away from the skin in a single motion. Don't twist the tweezers as this can break off the mouth. And if you see a piece of the mouth still on the skin, Try a second time to grab it and pull straight out. And if unsuccessful, just leave it alone and let the skin heal. Clean the bite area in the hands with alcohol or soap and water. Don't crush the tick with your fingers. Don't put it back down. Um, place the tick in alcohol or sealed bag, wrap it tightly in tape, or simply flush it down the toilet. So now, how, how would one know that one has a tick bite? Is uh, uh, I, I, you mentioned the bullseye uh, appearance, which is one way. Is there also some other way of knowing? How would one know the... The other way, yeah. So the other way, if one suspects Lyme disease, is to get um, testing, and which is what Quest Diagnostics and other laboratories provide. And there are several tests available um, the one that's recommended by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and others is a two-step process where we look for antibodies against the bacteria and then do a second test called the Western blot that's more definitive uh, that um, helps in identifying individuals who have been infected. Actually, okay. So, but but normally one would not need to be tested, or one, what would one know when to get tested? If one has the classic symptoms, particularly the rash, uh, many doctors will treat at that stage. And if there's any uncertainty, uh, they will confirm with the blood test. I see. Okay. So uh, it's important to get. Go on. It's important to get diagnosed, um, particularly early, um, because antibiotics are available that can cure Lyme disease. And even if Lyme disease were to progress to a further stage and cause uh, arthritis, typically in the large joints like the knee or the wrist or the ankles, um, Lyme disease is generally still treatable at that stage. I see. All right, so this has been very helpful information, and I'm sure it will help for people who are very busy outdoors in the summertime. Is it more a summer disease? Historically, it has been a summer and springtime disease, as that's when the ticks are out and the mice and the deer are out. Um, but as we look at our own data, particularly from places like California and Florida and Texas, we're seeing much more of a year round uh, uh, trend in terms of uh, when people are being diagnosed. Um, okay. So it may be that those warmer climates that the ticks are more active uh, throughout the year, um, as well as the adult uh, forms of the tick that can be active throughout the year. I see. Well, I'm uh, very appreciative of this information. I'm sure it will be helpful for my health power 
audience, and I want to thank you for in, informing us more about summer tick disease. And, and as you say, it's not just summer anymore. Right. So, Dr. Goodwin, if your audience would like more information, it's www.questlimereport.com. So www.questlimereport.com, www. yes. Report.com. Okay, that's very helpful. All right, so let me thank you again, and I'm looking forward to sharing this information with my audience. Thank you very much, Dr. Goodwin. Uh, have a good day now. <laughs>